I remember my cousin was working for BMW warehouse and he told me, hey, they need people. Do you want to come and work for, for one or two weeks? You make a couple of dollars? And I was like, sure. And I started working and I remember my paycheck was like $290 per week. And it was like $290 per week. This is a ton of money in my country. So I'm in. So I made the decision to stay in the United States. And um, as I was working in the BMW warehouse, I started like looking for something else. You know, I'm always being like a visionary. I'm always been looking for something great. I wanted to be a millionaire. You are like on fire right now, man. I mean, this is this is absolutely incredible what you're doing. I mean, I've never seen anything like this been done in 25 years that I've been in the business. Never seen anything like this being accomplished. And so uh, we're going to dive into that, man. Uh, I, I really want to get your mindset. I want to get so uh, we're, we are um, I'm not even going to intro the show, man. I'm just everybody knows we're on Wealth on the Beach podcast, but we're talking to Carlos Leon. Is that how, how I say it? Leon? Is that, is that Leon? Leon. Correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, but, I, you know, I really want to dive in and figure out, like, how do you get to that? mindset where you created so much so fast and and so if people are listening right now you got to hang with us this is probably going to be one of the best podcasts that we've had in 130 podcasts uh this is probably going to be one of the best ones you've ever been a part of so because i'm gonna i'm gonna dive into every little piece of how he did what he did uh became a millionaire probably i think the fastest in the company's history. Uh, so be before I do that, though, Carlos, um, I want to find out a little bit about where you came from. So tell us a little bit about your upbringing. What were you like as a kid? Well, uh, I'm originally from uh, Colombia, South America. I came to U.S. Uh, when I was 21 years old, and um, I studied computer, computer science. And I wanted to come to US uh, for one reason, and that reason was to have a better opportunity. You know, I have everything that I need to go by to, to make a living in, in, in Colombia. My dad was providing for me, uh, we were very stable, but I was looking for something else, and I wanted to come to US to have a break from my regular life at 21. You know, you have a lot of things on your mind. So I came to uh, just to visit, uh, and then I fall in love with the with the country. I fall in love with the system. I fall in fall in love with. I start working like I remember my cousin was working for BMW warehouse, and uh, and he told me, hey, they needing people. Do you want to come and work for for one or two weeks? You make a couple of dollars. And I was like, sure. And I start working, and I remember my paycheck was like two hundred and ninety dollars per week. And it was like $290 per week. This is a ton of money in my country. So I'm in. So I made the decision to stay in the United States. And um, as I was working in the BMW warehouse, I started like looking for something else. You know, I'm always being like a visionary. I'm always been looking for something great. I wanted to be a millionaire. And this is something that I love to talk. I love to talk about money and all this stuff because I always wanted it. I always wanted to have a lot of things. Before you, you finish your story though, I do want to know what was it like being a child? I mean, how did you grow up? Did you grow up poor? Did you grow I mean, like middle-class, rich? I mean, what did your parents do as well? Well, I, I, I was a middle-class, I will say. Uh, never, never means a meal. Uh, my dad was working for a radio station. He was a salesperson for, he was selling um, marketing. He was doing marketing with radio stations and TV stations. And my mom, she was a business owner. She had a couple of uh, places. Um, she was selling like Christmas, Christmas tr trees. And she was selling uh, toys in Christmas. And then she was selling jewelry. And, and she was an entrepreneur. We didn't have a lot of money. We, we just was middle class. Um, I went to college, uh, I went to a good school. Um, I, I have a couple of good jobs in Colombia as well. But like I say, um, 
I was always looking for something. I, I'm, I have a nine year old that he's always looking like, when he look at my ring, and I think I was like that at that moment, he look at the ring and he say, dad, can you give me the diamonds from, from your ring? And I say, well, why you want the diamonds from the ring? Well, I, I, I wanna sell them. I'm gonna get the money, a lot of money. I, I'm gonna make an exact ring like you have, and I give you that back and I keep the change. And I was like, how you come up with that idea? And then I was kind of like that, right? I wanted to sell my toys and, and be trading stuff and all the, the craziness. And, and I think that's what I remember the most. And, and my mom, all of my family from, from my mother's side, they work as independent business owners. So I grew in that environment. When I came to US, uh, uh, that I started working for these companies uh, and warehouse. And then I went to a kitchen to cook because they told me they pay better if you become a chef. So I was pursuing a chef career. Never wanted to study, but wanted to just be a chef because of my skills, you know? And then I found out that, uh, that if, if you get a commercial CDA license, uh, uh, you can drive trucks and you get paid more. So I went and passed my CDL license and, and, and started driving dump trucks in New Jersey, come from New Jersey. And, and, and I always wanted to keep scaling, 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 scaling until I get to America. And so now you're in the BMW shop, right? <laughs> so you're working in the BMW shop. Yeah. And so what, what was that like um, as far as now you're making like $200 a week, two, 280 a week or something like that, yeah. $190 a week. And yeah. you're like, man, this is like unbelievable. It's America. You're yeah. an immigrant. You come over here and it's like, because what, what, what do they make? Like if you would have the same job back in your country, what would you have made? Like how much more did you make? What'd you say? Uh, I would say like $50 a month, $60 really? a month. Really? Yeah. So you're talking maybe, like 10 maybe times. a little more, maybe like a hundred dollars a month. I was making here like uh maybe a thousand, like twelve hundred. Yeah, I was making so you're talking 10 here. times. Yeah, about 10 times yeah. at that time. At that time, it was like 10 times. So it was it was like when I got my first check, I was like, oh my gosh, is this for real? I want to stay here. And it's a and big deal. It's a big deal. So I I, I just called my brother and my mom and I was like, man, I'm making it in America. I'm getting paid $290 per week. It's, it's a lot more than I get paid a month in a week. So they were like, oh my gosh. And then my brother, he was like, oh, I want to be there. And I was like, come over, here, come over. And then my brother came in and he started working with me um, in that warehouse. And so so what, what happened? Where, what was that? transition because you always had the mindset so like where was that transition where you were now recruited into the business how did how did you get recruited and well, when did you get recruited originally well, i got recruited originally back in 2006 i was living in new jersey i was driving dump trucks i was making like six thousand dollars a month which now we were talking about money right uh six thousand dollars a month and then I, I came to Georgia to visit a friend. And then, I, um, you know, Alex and Avria, Alex and Claudia and Avria, they were division leaders at that time. Uh, somebody, his brother gave me his card because I was like, I, when I came to Georgia, I saw all of the houses and I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Look at these houses. And in New Jersey, every, everything is super expensive and it's old. So when I saw new construction for $150,000, I was like, oh my God, I want to come here. But not only come here, but start selling homes. What I have to do to sell homes? And they told me, you need to get a license. And I was like, oh, okay. How can I get a license? So I found Alice's brother. He, leased, he was listening to me. So he handed a, a business card from Alex. And he said, hey, call my brother. He can help you um, getting the, the real estate license. And I, I called him immediately. He told me, that, oh, sure, come over to my office. I, I'll give you an appointment tomorrow at 9 a.m. And I, I, I can teach you how to get a, a real estate license. So I, I went to his office. And the first thing he told me, I remember, he told me, you know what? Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Alex Sanabria. 
We don't do real estate license here, but we do something better. Let me show you. You should see my face. My face was like this guy. I mean, and then when he showed me everything, I fall in love with the concept. I told him, Alex, you know what? I love this. I see something special about this. I'm going to go back to Jersey. And in three weeks, I'm going to pack. I'm going to move to Georgia. I'm going to start working with you. And that's how everything happens. I went back to Georgia, came to, uh, I mean, to Jersey, came back to Georgia three weeks after. And I started working in Primerica. So that's how I got introduced into the business the first time. If you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here. If you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.